I had a passion for all sports, really football and cricket from specifically from a very early age. And when I was at university in Manchester in, in uh, sort of 1988 through to 1992, um, I, well, even before then, I decided that sports writing was a field that, <coughs> that I wanted to go into. So did a lot of work experience uh, placements around local papers, The Times, various places. Um, and then when I was at college, was pursuing, trying to get that key first break, getting that key first job. Uh, and I was lucky, as you kind of need to be inevitably, but you, you make your own luck in this industry. Uh, I've got a, a job straight out of college uh, at, a, at an agency in London called Haters, which is still going today, which is a sports reporting agency. It was run by a guy called Reg Hater, whose son actually is the Mail on Sunday's cricket correspondent, Peter Hater. Uh, but he was a real Fleet Street legend, Reg Hater, and he, he died of a, about a year into when I started. But uh, the, the day that I went to see him, a guy had handed in his notice and I got lucky and I was offered a job very junior and then I progressed through that. was there for five years doing mostly football, reporting for regional papers, tab national tabloid papers mostly, but probably in the five years I was there wrote for pretty every national newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, did every little bit of cricket that came along and then after five years there I went freelance having developed enough contacts really to go it alone and I started covering cricket for the Times uh, and went went on a number of England youth tours, England under 19 cricket tours uh, as the only journalist really following the team and, and filing reports for the Times, the Daily Telegraph, the Press Association mm. and any other number of uh, outlets that were interested. Um, was doing that happily for about four years probably and then a job came up on Wisden Cricket Monthly magazine. I knew the editor who'd only been there probably about a year, I knew him from the cricket circuit. Uh, he offered me the job and then within about a year I was then deputy editor of that title. And then in 2003 Wisden Cricket Monthly merged with the old Cricketer magazine to form the Wisden Cricketer. I went for the editor's job with the new magazine, very fortunately got that job and that's where I've been ever since, um, as we are now, seven and a half years on from that. Well, it's a huge privilege to do this job. I mean, it is uh, um, it is a dream job, genuinely. And uh, I always had aspirations to be the, say, the cricket correspondent of a newspaper like the Times or the Telegraph. But to be honest, this is um, you know this is a plum job because you have a sort of profile within the industry, and you have access to. England players and you have, uh, um, your your brand is known throughout the industry but you're not on tour all the time with, like the newspaper guys and it, that is a really uh, tough job at times because I know it sounds like a, a really glamorous thing to be mm. touring the world watching cricket and it is a lot of the time and certainly for a single person it's a terrific life but uh, if you got married if you're married with a family that's really tough being away from home you know all that time and obviously we see how much the players are away from home and there's a lot of talk about you know too much cricket and, and the, the sort of uh, strain it places on them you know the journalists who follow them around are in the same boat obviously they're not out there physically uh, playing the games but they are away from home all that time uh, and there are a number of newspapers who say take the sun for example who basically have one cricket writer one full-time cricket writer john etheridge who's been doing the job i don't know as long as i've been in the industry so probably 20 years i should think um, and he covers every every tour pretty much they have a, a young guy who does the odd uh, tour and did, did the first bit of the World Cup for them but basically he's covering England wherever they're playing so he is he's away from home all that time but um, you know in terms of access and, and, and whatever it's pretty good I mean the nature of, of sport professional sport is that players are not quite as accessible as they once were the idea of journalists sort of you know in the pub with with certainly with footballers football has changed massively within the last 25 to 30 years you talk to old football writers and they be best mates with some players and they'd go drinking with players well you know that various things have changed the game is more professional now players don't go out drinking all the time or mm. after training all this kind of stuff and also they're just the nature of football has changed because all the foreign players and whatever it's just there's less of a kind of cultural common ground between journalists and players you've got agents you've got press officers at clubs and it's just a massive industry now so access to players in that in that in that sport is very very difficult and restricted. Cricket it's still pretty good uh, and certainly the guys who follow the England team around uh, regularly would have a pretty good relationship with most of the players but again there are a lot of sponsors involved I mean uh, 
that when we do a big interview with an England England cricketer, it'll often come via a sponsor like Jaguar or someone like that, and you're given an allotted time. Looking at the Wisdom Cricketer itself, obviously it's a monthly magazine publication. What trends have you noticed in the industry in the last few years? Obviously, with the emergence of online media, has it been difficult to direct all your focus into a monthly publication when perhaps, for example, the World Cup's going on and comes out today but it's slightly out of date how difficult is that balance it's a real challenge and uh, and it's a challenge even for newspapers who are coming out every day and, and you only have to look at you know anyone who follows um, the media or sport in the media I mean you can see that everything the immediacy of Twitter websites I mean even websites that seemed so innovative not that long ago almost now sometimes they look like traditional media you know in the way that you can kind of report events and say Twitter is a classic example but um, what we have to do and what, what we have to try and keep a hold of is that notion that we're able to produce something different and special on a monthly basis and yes and the World Cup is a good example where it's going on for a long time there's a matches every day and we've got an issue of the magazine out this week that's you know covering the first part of the World Cup and is that out of date well yes to an extent but on the other hand you're able to reflect in in some depth about things that have happened um, and that's the the thing that we always have to look at is rather than trying to chase the events all the time uh, you have to look at what you can provide that is different and remains not timeless exactly but will remain of interest to your readers not just for a month but maybe you know months or years down the line we're not quite in the same business as the wisdom almanac all these sat behind me here that are producing a book a year where they're really it's very much an historical account of what what may be going on we're not quite in that in that business we're not uh, a, a, a journal of record although in in the past we would have been uh, but we're looking to provide something that complements the live coverage and the immediate coverage that you can find on TV, radio and online. So, But it is a constant challenge and we've developed our own website over the, over the years. We formerly were part of uh, the Wisdom Group, which included Crick Info and the Wisdom Almanac. We're no longer part of that group. So, uh, Whereas in, in the recent past we had Crick Info as a sister uh, website. Uh, we've now had to go it alone and then in the recent months we've been bought out by a company called Test Match Extra which is a, a website, an English cricket website um, and we're in the process of merging our own website with Test Match Extra to, pr to produce something hopefully that's bigger and better uh, in the coming weeks and months. Do you feel generally like a, a little bit of pressure to keep moving things on, keep progressing, keep changing when things you know, are kind of good as they are but you feel like you have to keep chipping away at it? Definitely, and, and it is real pressure, and it's a pressure for anyone involved in, in print media at the moment, and uh, you know, keeping maintaining revenues, um, advertising revenue particularly is very very hard, um, and that goes. I mean, that's partly due to the recession. It's partly due to online. It's partly also to do with the way that that brands and companies now can act, can go direct to their audience you know if you if you have a product to sell whether it's a cricket bat or whatever it might be you can you know buy good marketing yourself and your own website and whatever and you can go direct to your audience rather than always coming through say us as a middleman you know in the, in the past we would have been the obvious the only place to go if you're a, a cricket specialist selling cricket bats or nets or hats or shoes wherever it might be you know it'd be like well, obviously you'd come to the wisdom cricketer um, and that's not always the case now so it's we have to fight hard for that there's also that balance between what sort of audience are we appealing to are we just for you know real cricket diehards or are we trying to just m spread our wings a little bit and appeal to people who might have got into cricket say during the 2005 ashes or they might be into 2020 uh, you know we are a specialist magazine but you can't afford to be too specialist too exclusive because yeah. otherwise you know lots of people out there we know there are hundreds of thousands of people who play cricket every weekend well we don't sell hundreds of thousands of magazines yeah. so we know that you know we're always trying to find reach that audience and I suppose the cricket players are the, are the key a key part of the audience are really hard ones to get to because you know that they love cricket you know that they play cricket you know that they buy cricket gear and cricket related things mm -hmm. so for all manner of reasons they're people that we want to get to but it's not always not always that easy I mean don't be put off is, is the simple answer I mean it's I think every time you know I'm sure every generation has has probably 
you know, had the impression that all oh, things aren't going to be what they are, things are changing. And certainly, you know, there is an argument that says now that, well, where's print media going to be heading? Where's the media heading? You know, because there's so much free media out there, free access to stuff on the internet that, you know, companies who, who make their living and make money out of the media, you know, it's, it's harder and harder to do. Um, I think being multi faceted is is very valuable and, and to be across all new technologies very valuable but I think the, the core thing still apply that that it's about good content and that means storytelling essentially you know and and the important things of commu ability to communicate clarity of language good basics and kind of grammar and syntax and all those things um, are entirely valuable I mean and and it's also about getting out there and telling stories finding stuff out telling people stuff they don't know obviously lots and lots of people have their own blogs now it's very very common to have your own blog and, and it's very um, everyone's an armchair pundit particularly in sport and that's fine but you know in truth you're not gonna become you know to me that's not that's a, a tiny part of what journalism is about but it, you know real journalism is about telling people stuff they didn't know whether that's however you're doing that whether that's on Twitter or Facebook or in a newspaper or on film it's about actually getting real information communicating with you know real people doing real things and then and then telling a story about it that's the real basics of journalism and I don't think that changes to be honest